Hello everyone, happy Sunday. Um, this young woman is going to give her own um, experience of detransitioning um, and the what could have turned out to be an absolute tragedy if, as certain people suggest, you know, youngsters as young as three, four, five should be encouraged. Um, kids just about it in puberty at 12 and 13 should be given hormones and people as young as 15 should be given surgery. So listen to what this young lady has to say. Very articulate, very honest and incredibly mature. Hello, this is a weird video for me to make, but it's something that I've spoken about on this channel before. Um, and that is the fact that I used to believe or I used to be trans and since then I have detransitioned. This video is not intended to be transphobic, I'm just talking about my own experience and issues with the LGBT community. I was very young when I started feeling issues with my body and my self-esteem. I was maybe eight or nine when I hit puberty and it was around this time that sort of my anxiety started. Eight or nine hitting puberty. We heard, didn't we? Pete's mentioning the other day that when people, you know, young people hit puberty, they should be started on hormones immediately um, or even before then. And with the next step into surgery being hastened along just so wrong then um, I started feeling discomfort within myself and when I got into high school I fell in with sort of an LGBT friend group in this friend group everyone sort of aligned their identities so fully with their sexuality or their gender that I began to believe that this was like normal that it was normal to have your sort of only personality trait being your gender or your sexuality and this was how a lot of them like self-identified they would be they i i fairly remember many of my friends saying oh my only personality trait is that i'm gay or whatever and that was the way that i thought friendships and that i thought people were supposed to be that um we were in this sort of righteous bubble uh, that sort of defied societal conventions and when I sort of saw the idols that my friends looked up to um, people like Elliot Page or Hunter Schaefer um, I would see posts from trans people that say essentially you know I struggled with my body a lot when I was younger and then I finally realized that I was trans and I decided to fully transition i.e. like double mastectomy or um, bottom surgery and then I finally felt happy and when you're young you don't really tend to sort of assess the information that you take in you sort of see well for at least for me when I saw that information I thought to myself okay well not instantly but over time you come to think okay well that is the solution to issues with your body and issues with your femininity so I decided very very early in my life I think as soon as I was 12 or 13 that the second I turned 16 or 18 or I had raised enough money I would essentially run away from home and get a double mastectomy and go on testosterone because I was non-binary and I did not feel or I believed I was non-binary and I did not feel comfortable in sort of being feminine. Now my parents weren't even necessarily against trans people but the whole sort of culture of LGBT um, culture of LGBT teens is that you are in some ways misunderstood by your parents that's sort of the way that um, you 
perceive yourself to be or how you perceive your relationship with your parents to be uh, whether or not you know they're supportive or anti-trans I know now that my parents love me no matter what but still I would find reasons to sort of resent them and to find sort of excuses to uh, isolate myself further and further from them probably because this is what my friends were also doing and what a lot of the people I admired went through too like issues with their parents which is really sad looking back on it. I mean, I'm very, very skeptical of a movement that encour directly or indirectly, this is a very charged sort of, um, it's charged voc vocabulary. I don't intend it to be sort of criminalizing them, but I'm very skeptical of a movement that sort of isolates children from their parents and makes them um, question their parenting and encourage, almost encourages them to step away and to sort of have a found family rather than um, cooperating with and trying to understand your already family. And it's true too that I'd... You see, it is a charged subject and for anyone to say something that it isn't right, which I believe that children of three, four and five should be encouraged, that children of eight, as this girl would have been when she hit puberty, should be given hormones, that children should be offered almost immediate surgery. As Pete was saying, at any age, no, he is wrong. And the unfortunate thing is when people speak out and say that it's wrong, that children of that age, their brains aren't fully formed, they've got no experience of the world, um, they've got no experience of anything really, and they're looking for some group to which they can become um, part of. And as in this young lady's case, that was the uh, community that she found herself in. I'm not saying it's wrong for everybody. I'm saying that it's, it's wrong for many. And for people such as Pete's of his mind to promote such an agenda, for three, four, five, eight, thirteen year olds is absolutely one hundred per cent wrong. Terrible relationship with my parents and with the rest of my family when I identified as trans. It was very, very easy to fall into the mindset of no one understands me, I'm from a different generation. Uh, my issues are completely unique to me, but the truth is that when I spoke about it later on, sort of after with um, a few of the women in my family, they too have like struggled with feeling feminine younger in their younger years. Of course. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're trans. And this is one of the biggest issues that I have at the moment. I think it's um, sort of posited as a solution when really the solution is something else entirely or rather a teaching of like self-acceptance in a way um and no one ever explained to me that puberty would be a difficult time emotionally i knew of course that like hormones were high and mm -hmm. um like my body would change but that was about it no one ever told me that you're it's a strange feeling going from sort of childhood to adulthood and the difficulty of that... Does and totally the wrong time because it is so emotionally charged. It is a time of turmoil and totally the wrong time to be making such drastic, sometimes irreversible, often irreversible decisions about your future and for people to promote it is just downright irresponsible in my opinion.
it's not point necessarily to your gender identity. It just points to sort of your own discomfort and mental health. I publicly identified as trans or non-binary for four years until I was, I think, 15 or 16, and after which I sort of made an Instagram post that said, um, I'm not trans anymore. And then I think I deleted Instagram and I sort of isolated myself for a very long time because whether or not it was real, I sort of perceived the whole world world to be against me so I had sort of built myself into this little victim mindset where I thought that you know because of course people didn't fully understand the fact that I was non-binary I mean a lot of people did not because we were 12 and 13 and this was a new thing but I took that very very personally and I took that to mean um that they were against me when they probably weren't and so I assumed that the people who had been my friends when I was trans would stop being my friends after I stopped being trans, which was true. Uh, my LGBT friend group pretty much instantly disowned me, um, and I them to some extent, because I was slowly coming to terms with the fact that I did not want to be friends with, um, with people who I considered to be superficial. But that's another issue and not one that I'll talk about publicly. The next couple of years after I sort of publicly detransitioned were very, very hard. It was really difficult to sort of re-establish myself knowing that I had made such a huge mistake. And that was probably amplified by my own feelings of depression, social anxiety. And it was just, I don't think I ever fully reintegrated back into like high school society after that because I found it really embarrassing. Um, it was a difficult thing to have gone through so young and to base your whole identity around and it's such a big thing that when you realize that you're no longer that thing the people around you just turn essentially they think that you've been like lying to get attention which i don't believe i was at the time i think i was just heavily heavily misguided and being so young i was so impressionable and mm -hmm. i read recently that it takes 14 times of being told something for a child to believe it and so I suppose it could have just been that I was told so many times it's possible that you're trans, it's Brian possible that you're trans, that eventually I started to believe it mm. and this is nothing against the LGBT community but I think the, I know a lot of people with stories similar to mine both personally and online but no one really talks about them no one really talks about um, the rising amount of young women who at some point consider themselves tra trans, either medically transitioned or didn't, and then came to regret it. The only real time I've had this discussed publicly or online was through a Joe Rogan podcast with Abigail Shreya, who has also written a fantastic book. But she basically says that to some extent, and this is no nothing against like the transgender community, but to some extent, being transgender now is to what is is to depressed teenage girls what say anorexia was in the nineties or drugs were in the seventies. It's sort of what girls who have home problems, who have issues with their body, who have issues with their family, it's what they turn to. It's terrible to say, really, but it's almost like um, a form of culture club isn't it to which children can and they are children to which children can form attachments and identify even if that really isn't what they should be identifying with certainly not at this particular time in their lives which is, um, you know, a time of almost insurmountable trauma and, you know, a whole lot of colliding hormones anyway. As a solution for their identity, or not solution, but what they base their identity around. To me, this is so convincing because I can see it now how 
incredibly high the levels of transgender people are rising, particularly amongst young teenage girls. I mean, it's unprecedented. It's a several thousand percent increase in the last 20, 30 years. And you have to consider that some of that must be cultural and some of that must be societal. I don't think it happens organically that, you know, such a huge percentage of young girls just wake up one day and realize that they're trans. I don't think that that's organic. I think that that is motivated in some way, whether they perceive it to be that way or not. But the trouble with this is, I mean, despite the fact that I date women, not exclusively, I don't identify as being part of the LGBT community because to me, the LGBT community or the one that I have experienced clings so much to its beliefs and to its system and its agenda Political. of sort of self-victimization and attacking anyone who disagrees with this experience this is true of a lot of detransitioners um the anger that i, that I can't feel. personally agree with it i don't think it's right to sort of attack anyone who doesn't agree with your specific dogma um and this is in no way an attack if anything it's me speaking about my own experience in not officially but rather leaving the lgbt community and it's a difficult thing to talk about i know that a lot of people will probably resent me for putting out this video despite the fact that i've tried to stay as true to my own emotions and experiences as possible but I do it with no malice in my heart. If anything, I do it out of empathy for other young girls who are like me, who see this as the new solution to their issues with themselves and their femininity. Every day I am so, so grateful that like my parents didn't have enough money for me to medically transition at 12 or 13, or that I didn't run away from home and decide to have a double mastectomy, or, you know, that it's, even that it's difficult for young people in the UK to go through these treatments, that you have to wait so long, because if I had not had to wait so long on the NHS, I <laughs> would have regretted it so much. I mean, my in the past couple of years, my femininity has brought me so, so much, and I never would have been able to experience that had I not detransitioned and taken the time to really consider my own identity. And I know I'm not alone because I personally have at least like five to ten friends that have all done this uh, to some greater or lesser extent. And I think the statistics mirror this too. It's something like a majority of people who transition are equally as depressed as they were before than they are after. And I think the percentage of suicide goes up very, very highly uh, five years and after medical transition mm. for a large percentage of people which is interesting to me because it was always posited as a life-saving um, surgery to have sort of bot top or bottom mm -hmm. surgery. And it's, I think it's such a huge decision to make without having been told the other side of it. I mean, exactly. things like testosterone, they tell you that it's not permanent, but it is. If you take a look at some of the public sort of detransitioners who have been on testosterone, who have become infertile because of it, because that is an inevitable side effect of testosterone, um, who experience joint pains their whole life, chronic pain, um, fevers, anything like that. It's just, it's, it's something that I wouldn't wish on anyone to look back and realize that they made a mistake. It's such a huge and irreversible mistake to make, make that if anything I say can help people consider whether it makes them truly happy, then my goal is achieved. All I really want is for people, young women especially, to, before they make any permanent decisions, take a long, long look inwards. Heal your mental health, first of all. That is the biggest thing, I think. Heal your mental health and then consider if you still feel uncomfortable within your own sexuality or gender. Because for me, after I healed my mental health, I feel almost no inclination towards like masculinity or androgyny. And I think that's the case for a lot of people who sort of experience depression in their earlier years, but then change as they get older. It's a terrible mistake to make and 
one I hope that is made a lot less often. Obviously, it's not a mistake for everyone. I'm not talking about everyone. I'm talking yeah. about the select few who are socially pushed or socially nudged into it. I'm so grateful every single day that I did not make any medical choices that would have affected me my whole life now. Because I, if I had had the choice when I was 12 or 13, I fully, fully would have believed yes i want to be infertile my whole life just for this and now having children is like my number one goal in life it's my biggest goal it's 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 my dream now to have children and it breaks my heart that that could have been taken away from me if i had been encouraged just a little bit more by my parents or by you know the system or the nhs or anything like that but yeah this video has no hate towards trans people i just want everyone to consider my own perspective and my own experience as someone who has detransitioned and having been on both sides of sort of deep deep within the lgbt community and then having left it having stopped being depressed having come to a lot more happiness in my life and yeah again i only send love and hope and peace out to all of you and i hope that you find peace within yourself if you're watching this video and yeah love you bye what a wonderful young woman and what a message that is you know to people who think that because you know, a lot of us say that no, children are not capable of making the decision at three, four, five, eight years of age. That we have this bias. We do have a bias. And that bias is towards letting children have their childhood. That's all. Back later.